Hi Church, last week we looked at transformation and the trajectory of who we are becoming. This week we wanted to look at another foundational piece, filled. What does it look like for us to be a community that is filled with the Holy Spirit, corporate and individual places of God's presence? So I've been part of our church for the better part of 20 years and uh, we landed at Hillsong Church in the late 90s with my family and uh, grew up in our kids ministry, grew up going to youth and I remember as a young man heading to youth on a Friday night and encountering the goodness and the love of Jesus in quite profound ways and uh, that sense of encounter and connection with the Lord really framing everything that I'm doing in my life right now. I remember in about sixth grade there was a pastor who's much loved in our campuses in Sydney called Sanger coming to preach to the ch children's ministry at the time and he preached on the Holy Spirit and I remember as a 12 year old, 11 year old, responding to his call for prayer and as all these people came to the front and gathered, I came to the front, we worshipped for a little while, and then he prayed. He asked Holy Spirit that he would come and fill every young person that gathered at that altar on that Sunday morning. And as an 11-year-old, a 12-year-old, I began to speak in tongues for the first time. And all of a sudden, the thing that, that I'd heard in church growing up, the thing that I'd seen my parents do, the thing that I'd, I'd seen these mighty heroes in the faith do all of a sudden became accessible to me. And I'd, I'd walked into a new dimension with God, something that was disconnected from my life, something that I didn't understand fully, just through a moment of someone deciding to facilitate what God was doing in a service and be obedient to that, I entered into that experience and it has marked my today as much as it marked my time then. It was that infilling of the Holy Spirit that then influenced and determined what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I guess my encouragement for people is when it comes to being filled, God wants to come close to you. But more than just coming close to you, He wants to use your life. A lot of the times we, when we're talking about the filling of the Holy Spirit, it seems like it's for some and not for others. But the Word says, I'll pour out my Spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. And so there are people who are coming to our churches, whether in Boston or New York or New Jersey, and they need to hear from God. They need to know that there's a God who loves them, who there's a God who sees them. And so when I think about being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, I think about being commissioned by God to represent Him to Boston well, so that when people come and gather, they can hear the word of the Lord. They can hear what God is saying about their marriage. They can hear what God is saying about their family life, about their work life. And we're not coming to a God who doesn't answer or understand, but has power available to meet their need. So when we're talking about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about the God who wants to come close and not just to observe, but to act. So you know, it's so funny how the Lord works because we came to Boston at the beginning of 2020 for a work opportunity and we had no idea what the next year was going to hold. About six weeks after moving here, a little thing called COVID happened, not sure if you've heard about it. And during that season, it was pretty funny because we ended up moving to the other side of the world to work from home. But you know what? Part of the spirit-filled life isn't just acting in obedience in these big one-off events, but the question I have to ask is, am I hearing Him today? And we felt the Lord say not only to come, but to stay. So the spirit-filled life's a bit of an adventure because oftentimes you'll do one thing, not realizing that God very well might be leading you to do another. Never would have imagined a few years ago when we made the move to Boston that a few years later we not only have the pleasure of serving our young adult community here, but just recently been blessed to give birth to our first baby, Toby, who is a wonderful, wonderful young man. He's a happy kid. You know, the Bible says that one generation would declare his works to another. And when I was growing up as a young man, I was fed stories of revival and moves of God from times gone by and testimonies of miraculous healing and missions for the Lord and 
wonderful stories. But now that I'm a father, I now have an obligation to declare the mighty works of God to the next generation. And part of the Spirit-filled life is making sure that I don't miss that changeover. So although we have and will see great things in God, I now have an opportunity to declare those works to my children. And I'm so excited that my children will be raised in a move of God. They'll be raised in a church that not only believes in them, but will facilitate encounters with God for them so that this generation can declare His works to the next. When it comes to the work of the Spirit in our lives, it's easy for the focus to be on the gifts of the Spirit. However, the Bible also speaks about the fruit of the Spirit and that God's Spirit engages deeply with our own spirit so that we know who we really are, that He is our perfect Heavenly Father and that we are unconditionally loved by Him. These are the foundations that a Spirit-filled community needs to be built upon, that we are overwhelmingly loved by God and the stillness it takes to come to a place of really knowing and sensing, of experiencing that love. From our position as children of God, we are empowered to bear good fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is the kind of foundation that the gifts of the Spirit can be outworked on so that the gifts don't become about building our own name, but can be offered to build up the community instead and bring glory to God. We are focusing on two key aspects of being filled with the Spirit, discernment and prophecy. Discernment involves the practices by which we are able to understand our hearts. When are we being led by the spirit of the age or the spirit of the world or the enemy of human nature? And when are we being led by the Spirit of God? Some of this involves understanding how we have been formed to this point. What are the influences of our upbringing and environment? What are the influences of our family of origin even going back a couple of generations? In emotionally healthy relationships, we do a genogram of our families back to our grandparents. And while we might know some of the story, to see it all written out and acknowledge some of the common traits and patterns as well as tragedies and triumphs, can help us start to discern better. The Ignatian practice of examine is another helpful way to discern what's taking place in our hearts and bring those things before God. Discernment can help us engage with the gifts of the Spirit in a way that is about loving and serving others. Of the many gifts, we are focusing on prophecy. In 1 Corinthians, Paul encourages us to pursue love and strive for the spiritual gifts, and especially that you may prophesy. For us to develop that gift in our community, it's going to take training and feedback, a culture of humility that's open to getting it wrong at times so that we can remain open to the ways in which we need to grow and open to what is going to be best to serve the community that we're a part of. It's exciting to see what is already taking place in people's lives as we are filled, as God's Spirit indwells us. We are believing that in looking to discernment and prophecy as keystone practices, we'll be empowered to be a healthy, Spirit-filled community. Let's believe together to fan into flame the embers of what God is already doing among us.